The ambulance looks really nice. Batman himself looks really nice, obviously. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Risky Fitness. So as promised, here is our modding guide for Batman Arkham Asylum. Batman Arkham Asylum, obviously a great game. I really enjoy playing it for the channel, but, you know, it's an older game, and it's not really optimized for modern PCs. So we're going to update it a little bit. And this is going to give you an even better experience than those remasters that were released a while back. So the first step that I always take whenever I want to mod a game is I always take a look at the PC gaming wiki page for that game. And there are a ton of cool things you can do for this game. There's a lot of mods in here that we're not going to cover. We're just going to cover the major mods. And these mods are going to work for both the Steam and Epic Game Store version of Batman Arkham Asylum Game of the Year Edition. So the main thing we're going to look at, and this is a section I always look at for any game that I play on PC first, is the essential improvement section. So the skip intro videos we're actually gonna cover with the next part, which is the advanced launcher. So the advanced launcher, I'm gonna go ahead and put a link to this in the description of the video, replaces the existing launch with a much better one that has a lot more options. So if you take a look real quick, uh, if we go to Steam and we open up Arkham Asylum, we get this launcher and it has a few things right it has settings in here you can do some pretty basic setup but it doesn't have all the options that we're going to need to really optimize the gameplay experience so we're going to replace this with a new launcher we're going to do this we're going to click on current release to go ahead and download the launcher you can see from my my downloads bar that i had already previously done this but we're going to do it again just for the video so once you have this you're going to go ahead and right click and use your extraction software of choice to extract it to a new folder. We have BM Launcher here. It's got a one next to it, because like I said, I've done this once before. And this has two files in it, BM Launcher and nlog.dll. So we're gonna copy these two files and we're gonna stick them right in the binaries folder. So we're gonna go to Steam, right click on the game in our library, manage, browse local files, and this is the really important part. This has to go under the binaries folder. And when we put it there, it's gonna replace two files. So we're gonna say, yes, go ahead and replace those files. Now with that done, now when I launch the game, I'm gonna get a different launcher. And this launcher has a number of fantastic options. So you can see here, because I've used this before, it looks like it's uh, detecting that I've already applied the texture pack fix and things. So I'll just show you a couple of things here that you're gonna wanna do. So you can go ahead and play with these presets and play with these settings, but the main settings that you're gonna wanna look at are depth of field and phys -X. Everything else you're just gonna wanna set to your own preference. So I'm going on with ultra preset for, for now. This ambient occlusion kinda slows down the game a lot. So if you have a very high-end machine, you're probably okay, but you can enable that if you want and just see how the game runs. If it runs good, awesome. If it doesn't run great, no problem. Being able to toggle phys -X here is really useful because one flaw with this game is that there are parts of the game that will crash if phys -X is enabled. So what I usually do is I'll just play uh, with phys -X enabled because it is really cool to see the effects. But then when the game crashes, I exit, I turn phys -X off, and then I relaunch the game. I play through that part of the game that's giving me a problem, and then I move on and turn phys -X back on next time I play. So of course, you know, play around with this, do, do what you feel is best, experiment, feel free to turn some different things on and off. But the depth of field, I recommend disabling because it makes the game look kind of washed out and takes away a lot of the dynamic lighting and coloring. And if you look at the videos I have on my channel of the game, you'll see I have depth of field disabled. Disabling startup movies is a really great option because the game takes forever to load with all those goofy startup movies. <laughs> so by clicking on this, you remove those and the game loads up much, much faster. So the next thing we're gonna do, restore some of the DLC that was never released on the PC version of the game. Uh, there are some DLC that was only ever released on the PlayStation. So some of the DLC that used to only be available on the PS3 was ported to the OS X version of the game, and you can finagle it into this version. The PC Gaming Wiki makes this look like way more complicated than it really is. Just do this. Open up this link where it says extract these patch files, and I'll go ahead and put a link to this also in the description as well. Just download the file. You're gonna have to agree to their terms. Click download like six times. And again, I already have this downloaded once before, so it's gonna, gonna have like a one or a two next to it and you're gonna have to wait for the download so once the dlc has been downloaded go ahead and extract it and then you're gonna have a folder called batman ps3 dlc and there's three files in here now there's a couple of different ways that you can go about doing this i'm actually going to go ahead and copy these files into my batman directory so the same one that we were looking at before and just as a refresher right click manage browse local files and then we're going to pop into binaries 
and we're going to paste these files right into our binaries folder. Uh, there's a couple of different ways you can handle this. The way that they ask you to do it on the PC gaming wiki is a little bit more complicated. So I'm just going to do it this way. Now you can right click that patch.bat and run it. But what I like to do in these kind of situations, type CMD in the address bar in Windows Explorer to bring up the command prompt. Just so I can see what's going on is if you just run a batch file right from uh, Windows Explorer, so it won't even show you what's happening behind the scenes. And I want to be able to see that. So I'm going to go ahead and type patch.bat because that's the file that we're running. And of course, always run executables and batch files at your own risk. I've run these previously, so I'm pretty confident that they're just fine. And so when you run the patch, it's going to go ahead and try to find the executable in the path. It might throw a couple errors, but it's really not a big deal because look, at the end, it does say patching successful. And then it's going to automatically close the window in 10 seconds, but we can press any key. It'll go back to the prompt. You can let it go ahead and close, or you can just type exit. So now that we did that, we should have all of our DLC uh, installed. So I want to go ahead and put in the HD texture pack. Uh, now, when you click on that link, it's going to bring you to a Steam community forum that has a lot more modding information about this game. But all we're really interested in is just the texture pack. And if you look on the right hand side, we have a nice big old download link. So it's almost kind of hiding from us. <laughs> so there's a couple of versions of the texture pack here, but they're both the same. Just one's in zip and one's in raw. Uh, I think raw is a little bit better compression, so that'll probably download faster. Once the texture packs have completed downloading, you can go ahead and extract them to a folder. And now you're going to see that you have all these texture packs. It even comes with textmod.exe, which is a way that you can apply them, but you can also apply them through the launcher. It says here that I already had applied the tech, so that's going to be a problem for me. So since we can't get that to work, since I already have it, uh, you can either click on that texture pack button or you can use the text mod tool that came with the textures to try and do it. You're probably not going to run into this issue. You're probably going to be able to use the launcher because uh, mine's a little screwed up because <laughs> I did it before. So if you find that you do have to use text mod like I do here, then just follow the instructions in the uh, Steam community page, which I'll have a link to down there. We'll walk through it real quick. Pick our application, which is shipping PC game. EXE. We're going to open our package. And then you can even choose which kind of cape you want and which Batman textures you want. So that's pretty cool. I'll just run that. Just bear in mind that uh, injecting these textures can take a long time. So as you can see, we now have Joker available as a playable character. And all the downloadable content is here. We have a much nicer looking Batman here. And the game just looks a whole lot nicer overall. Now, there is one more thing that I wanted to go over. The cutscenes in this game are all in like 720p. So it's awful. So I really would like to fix that. So this actually doesn't appear on the PC gaming wiki, but you can use AI upscaled cutscenes to replace the existing ones. So if you have a display that's 1080p or above, they're going to look really, really bad. So in order to download the cutscenes, just go ahead and click on this link here. And this is going to give you another guide. And this is going to bring you up to how to do the 4K cutscenes. You can download them via either one of these two links. This is going to be a download that's going to take a very, very long time. I use a media fire mirror here. So it's a, four, it's a it's almost a 15 gig download. So it's going to take a while for you to download all these files. Once you've downloaded the 4K cutscenes, and like I said, it might take a while. It's actually really simple. All you have to do is just drag the folder into the main folder. So it'll be just like this. So after you've extracted the Asylum 4K folder, there's going to be a folder called BM game. You're just going to copy that. And once more for a refresher, right click, manage, browse local files. And you see there's already a folder here called BM game. So you're just going to paste your new BM game folder here. And when it asks you if you want to merge or overwrite files, just say yes. And what it does is it overwrites all these movies into the Asylum 4K version of the movies. So you see like I have an empty folder under there because I already did this. And you're going to have all 4K versions of the cutscenes. It's going to look a lot better. And that's it for the tutorial. So we improve the visuals of the game. We upgraded the cutscenes, we upgraded the textures, we upgraded Batman, <laughs> we unlocked a bunch of DLC that was previously not available for the PC. So I hope that was a helpful tutorial for you. From here on out, 
I have a playthrough of this entire game on my channel if you're interested in that, so please stay tuned. You can enable notifications if you don't want to miss it. I do commentary on most of the uh, most of the game. Some, some, sometimes I left it off because I was having audio issues. <laughs> but for the most part, I have commentary. And uh, I have a lot of other Let's Play walkthrough type commentary videos coming. I also have some different kind of history and trivia content for various games. And I have some more tutorials for PC gaming and emulation coming. So please subscribe, enable notifications. If this video is helpful, please throw it a like and subscribe to the channel. If you would like, you can join my Patreon. You can follow me on Twitter. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitch. All those links will be down in the video description. Thank you and until next time. A little more gameplay footage here. You can see the textures look really good here. I'm impressed. It's really noticeable in the background textures that you might not really have looked at otherwise. Like, you know, the police cars, those really pop. The ambulance looks really nice. Batman himself looks really nice, obviously. Doing a terrible job with this right now. <laughs> 